Do you ever wish you just had some go-to ideas to make your mix sound more colorful, but then you kind of fall into the same routine of template mixing or copying the settings from another song just because you need something that works every time? I know. I've been on a compression kick lately, but it's only because I want to keep everyone hyper-focused on the different ways that you can use it. After my last video in which I explained blending compressors, I figured it only makes sense to break down some of my go-to compression settings. By the end of this video, you'll know my techniques that I use to set my mixes apart and how colorful these aggressive compression settings can be. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST, and when it comes to compression, I'm still trying to push the envelope. Oh wait. I already made that joke and it was a real knee slapper. Get it? Because I'm talking about compression and the knee literally slaps the signal once it goes over a certain threshold. And hopefully your threshold of dad jokes isn't too high because I'm just getting started. We act like there are a million things happening in a mix, but we can break it down into a few categories. Two of the most important being compression and EQ. And I'm not gonna give up until you have these under your belt. With these two things mastered, you can pretty much handle any and all mixes. So let's hop into the first tip here. The rear bus trick. This is mainly for instrumental buses and vocal buses. It was created by Andrew Sheps some time ago and it's probably one of the most interesting uses of parallel compression that I've seen. The way this technique works is you take all your buses besides the drums and you send them to a new track. Then you apply some pretty aggressive compression on the track and use it to blend to taste with the original song you're mixing. What this accomplishes is adding life and weight to the guitars, vocals, and effects without having to do anything crazy. Andrew Sheps used to do this on a console but when he switched to start working in the box he brought this technique with him it's extremely powerful for getting your mix punchy with a couple of little moves check this out and see how it sounds Do you see how lively the song became with this simple trick? Yeah, I know it became louder, but pretty hard to avoid that when using a move like this. The mix actually got more glued together and became more colorful. These are the types of tips that no one ever talks about, but can give you that extra 10% that you're missing. I thought that one was pretty crazy. Tip number two, 1176 all buttons in. The all buttons in mode is aptly named because it means exactly what it says. After designing the 1176, they happened upon an accidental mode in which you could engage all of the ratios at once to create a hyper aggressive sounding compression that one could almost call reverse look ahead. All buttons in. On that subject, I need you to push all buttons in right now, like button subscribe button, and the bell to be notified when we upload new content. My transition game is still crazy. This overdrive tone of harmonic distortion from this mode has been praised millions of times and gets most of its use on drums. However, I really like using it on vocals. Here's an example of how powerful it can be, especially on screams. I crossed the line, but you were out of your mind. You lost the light in your eyes on the moment she died. There's lag in the compressor hitting the transients at the proper attack and release time in this mode, which gives extremely interesting and punchy results. Notice how much more forward the screams were. Just remember to be careful with the release and dial it back if it starts getting too noisy and out of control. Only use this on sources that need some extra flavor and grit. Great for screams, aggressive cleans, and even the next topic. Three, 
smashing your parallel compression. This has been one of the keys for finding a way to punch drum shells through a dense mix and also using it as a vocal parallel, but more on that in a minute. When it comes to using a parallel bus, the point is to be able to blend in a non-compressed signal or slightly compressed signal with one that's smashed to all hell. It's literally the easiest way to make your drum track shine when you don't have that much space in a mix, but still tend to love that larger than life drum sound. The best settings for this is usually slowest attack, fastest release, due to the nature of how the bias affect the compressor in that mode. When it comes to vocals, you do a similar thing with parallel compression, but I find that all buttons in is oddly not what I'm looking for. I much prefer getting that spitty sound on the main take than blending it in. So anything above a 10 to one ratio on whichever compressor you use will do the right type of parallel compression. Four, limiting and distorting your bass low end. I said it once, I said it twice, and I'll keep saying it. Limiting the low end of your bass will keep your song in check, but most limiters aren't going to add any color. If you've been keeping up with the trend of hip hop lately, the 808s are super distorted and you can add to that effect with the right type of compressor. So let's go over these one more time. The rare bus trick. 1176, all buttons in. Smashing your parallel compression limiting and distorting your low end. These are four compression moves that can and will add life to your mix, as long as you use them correctly. Remember to pay attention to the rear bus trick because it can be used in unison with the parallel compression of the drums, considering they don't get sent to that bus. Distorting bass low end can even be cool on rock and metal songs, but this is definitely a special case kind of scenario. I mean, you heard what I did with that pop punkish type track. It definitely gets colorful though, and all buttons in modes will do some special things that can't typically be replicated by means of just a compressor. Keep on experimenting with these tips, show me what you're up to in the comments, and we'll keep up this journey of finding the perfect mix. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notification so when a video drops, you know the location. Until next time, I am out of here. Mic drop. <laughs> Except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing because that'd get really expensive. Even if it is a piece of sure. Later.